Hey guys, Steve here with the Scroll Saw Workshop. I'm going to do a little demonstration night tonight. This is not a tutorial, but I get uh, questions through email pretty often asking me how uh, I first of all designed the scroll saw patterns that I design and what software I use, but also how I then take that 2D flat image and turn it into a 3D object that I can show as the uh, final, final project. Uh, I very often do not cut the projects unless I just uh, have to for a particular reason, uh, just because I do a new pattern almost every day and it becomes almost impossible through time and expense to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the two programs I use. Again, not a tutorial. This is just a demonstration, but it'll give you an idea of where you need to start and what software you might want to consider using. So the two programs I'm going to use are CorelDRAW, which is what you see on the screen right now. And CorelDRAW is a vector graphics drawing program used by graphic artists. And it's what I've used since 2007 to create all the patterns that you see on the scroll saw uh, workshop website. So that's what I have open here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple little basket pattern and then we're going to put it into Blender and turn it into a 3D rendered image that you can see what the basket looks like. So just real quick I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select a tool and I'm going to draw on the screen this little triangle shape. I'm going to set the number of sides to 8. Now we've got our octagon and I'm going to set the size of this to 8 inches by 8 inches and I'm going to put it in the center of the screen. So this is going to be the outer topmost ring of our little basket we're going to make. I'm going to go over to my contour tool and I'm going to do an inside contour of about 0.2 inches. That's what I just did there. Now because I want multiple rings that are going to stack on top of each other I want to have more contours inside. So I can go over here to my contour steps. So I can add my second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, let's say seven rings okay so there is basically the pattern already designed now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay in Corel Draw and add some features to this pattern that allow me to move it into Blender and turn it into a 3D object so to do that I'm going to select my smart fill tool and I'm just going to fill in these rings because right now these rings are a single object and they're not easy for me to manipulate so if I go up here and select my pick tool and I set uh, my move distance to 10 inches, whoops, let me back up, didn't mean to do that, set my uh, move distance to 10 inches, then I can select each one of these individual rings that I just made and I can move it over 10 inches to get it away from this original object. So now I can take this and you can see this is now one image and this is actually multiple seven images. So I can select these, put them back in the center of the screen. I'm going to turn them to gray just because it's a little easier to see. Now, the very top ring of this basket that we're going to make, I want to be a round ring. So I'm going to create another ring, and I'm going to set its size to 8 by 8. And in this case, I'm going to do an inside contour of a half an inch, 0.5 inches. And I only need one step for this one, so let me back it up to one step. I'm going to break this ring apart and again not a tutorial but I just broke that ring apart so it's a single object there's the top ring the bottom ring of this uh, basket needs to be solid so I'm going to take the bottom ring over break it apart and I'm going to use this broken apart put it back on the bottom and that is now the bottom of my basket so here we have a two, 2D file that I can export into Blender and turn it into a 3D object. Now to make that process a little bit easier I'm going to go ahead and rotate these rings. So I'm going to click on the second ring right here and I'm going to rotate it uh, 22.45. I'm going to go to the third ring and I'm going to rotate it 22.45. I'm going to go to the... I'm, if you notice here I'm skipping every other ring and I'm 22.45 and then the inside basket, make sure I got the inside there. I want to do 22.45. So there I've got my ring. Whoops, I didn't need to actually move that one. I can put that one back. Um, 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the order of these so we can get them ready for Blender. And again, all these steps after this step over here are just to go to the 3D rendering program. So I'm going to select the second ring. I'm going to move it to the back. I'm going to select the third ring, move it to the back. Fourth ring, fourth ring, move it to the back. Fifth ring, move it to the back. Sixth ring, move it to the back. Seventh ring, move it to the back. And then the bottom of the basket will move to the back. We'll bring our top uh, circular ring, put it back in the center of the screen on the top. So now we've got what we can send into Blender and turn it into a 3D object ready to be put together in the correct order. So I'm going to copy this, create a new page, paste that, and I'm going to export this as an SVG file. SVG file is just a scalable vector graphics file that will be that we can import into Blender and turn it into a 3D object. So I'm going to start Blender up now. And Blender is a 3D rendering program similar to what they use in 3D movies and stuff like that. So I'm just going to select this initial cube that they show and I'm going to delete it. Now we've got our 3D area that we can rotate around and do whatever we want to do. I'm going to go to File import. I'm going to import scalable vector graphics. I'm going to go to that file that I just exported out of Corel Draw. Hit import. Now there are over here in our window, these are each of the individual objects that we just exported out of Corel Draw and they are still two dimensional. They have no thickness to them. So I'm going to start down here. I'm going to click on, and again, I'm not going to point out where these menus are because there's hundreds of them in this program. So I'm going to go down to where I can extrude this, and I'm going to set this to 3. I want to go up to the next one, set it to 3, 3, 3. And I'm going to do each one of these layers that we just made in CorelDRAW and give it a thickness. In this case, the thickness that I'm simulating is a quarter of an inch. And the top one there, three. So I can go back down to here. There's our top ring. I'm going to select our tool to move. I'm just going to move it straight up. I'm going to select the next one, move it straight up. And all I'm doing is getting these out of the way so I can stack them back um, on top of each other in the correct order. And just one more here. So now these are the rings in the order we want them stacked. I'm going to change this over to a slightly different view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select face and select the little magnet. And what that does, that allows me to move these objects directly to a surface. So I'm going to select the second ring up from the base. And I'm going to hit my little magic keyboard keystrokes there. And I'm going to do that all the way down. This time, let me get my light down here a little better so you can see it, what I'm doing a little better. So now I'm going to select the second layer surface. And I'll stack that ring on that. And I'm going to keep going down until I get this all stacked up. Now, the learning curve of Blender is brutal. It takes a long time to learn this program. Luckily, for what I do, um, I only need just a small subset of the features in Blender. So I was, I've been using Blender now for about a year. I'm still not good with it, but I'm good enough to build, whoops, that's not what I wanted back up. I'm still not good enough to uh, do most of the features built into it, but I'm good enough to do the features that I need for this program. And all I'm doing here is setting up the camera view. I'm gonna move the camera view up a little bit. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a, um, I'm going to make each of these rings look like wood. Uh, so I'm going to add a texture to them. So in the top wood, I'm going to make it a darker color. And it's moving kind of slow here for a second. Computer's slowing down on me. Sorry about that. It'll catch back up here in a minute. There we go. And I'm going to take the very bottom base ring and I'm going to make it a darker color. Now all the rings in between, I'm going to make a lighter color. And I think you can already see that we're starting to get a 3D object that once I render it out into an image will look like the bowl or the basket that I was just creating. So now if I let me get a better, little better light on the subject here. I'm going to select the, that. I'm going to do add. I'm going to add a three point light uh, right there. I'm going to set the intensity or the wattage of each of these light bulbs. Uh, set that one to 500 watts. I'm going to set this one to 500 watts. And I'm going to set this one to, say, 700 watts. And I'm going to take this first light bulb and I'm going to put it down here so we get some light on the bottom of the basket a little bit so you can see it better. So now you can see what I've done is I've created this basket that I can render it out, I can use it in an animation, I can do whatever I want to do to create this basket. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go out and I'll get another program, another image like say let me go to uh, Blender, Blender Assets, I'm going to go to Round Wooden Table, I'm going to open up this little round table. And again, it's taking a second. The computer's kind of bogging down, but it'll load here in a minute. I'm going to select this table. I'm going to copy it, hopefully. Copy object. I can close this down. Close this down. Go back to here. Paste that here. It's obviously too small so I'm going to select it and scale it up real big and I'm going to move it down over to where our basket is move it back a little bit and again we can use our snap to tool to do snap it to the bottom of our basket and now we've got our basket it's still not quite in the right place let's move it let's turn this off Move this back, move it back a little bit, get it centered up a little bit. So now you can see we've got our little table with the basket on it. Now I can put a floor in here and a wall behind it and make it look better. But that is how I take a 2D pattern out of CorelDRAW and turn it into a 3D image that I can then render into an image that hopefully looks uh, you know, pretty realistic. And for the most part, they do. I'm Steve Good. Thanks for taking a few minutes to watch this video, and we'll catch you next time.